Hi, I am Alejandro Lopez, Application Engineer at Entopology. And today I'll be showing you how we can uh, create 3D printable phones for automotive applications, such as this uh, racing car that you can see on, right, racing car seat that you can see on the screen. So we'll see how not only we can control parameters like the lattice density and the thickness, but also we'll see how we can uh, do a spatial uh, variation of those properties uh, by using the field-driven design capability of NTOP platform. So we'll depart from a design space in, in SOLIDWORKS that I borrowed from uh, the GrabCal community, more specifically from Volgang Valden, who created this amazing design. And, and I want to thank you, Volgang, for, for this very nice uh, uh, racing car seat design that allowed me to show off NTOP's capabilities today. So, all right, so now that it's clear what we're going to show, let's let's have a look at how that process looks like in, in NTOP. So first of all, I'm going to import the part. So now that I have imported the SOLIDWORKS part, I am able to select the different solid bodies in that part. So you see, I am able to separate the seat frame from the seat cushion regions, right? And I'm going to focus on the uh, head cushion here. So basically I am able to uh, generate a volume mesh based on this, uh, on this body, right? And the reason why I do that is that I'm going to generate some random points based on this mesh. So you see that I have generated 2000 points on the mesh. And this parameter will drive the design of the lattice later. It will drive the lattice density. So I'm going to make it a variable and put it at the very top of my workflow and call this a, um, I'm going to call this head point count. And the reason why I do this is it's much easier to play with the design if you have the relevant design variables at the top instead of having to look for them in the in the block, in, in, in the specific block. So it's an advantage NTOP offers. You can create variables as you design and then make it very easy for, for yourself and for anyone who didn't work with the workflow to generate different design alternatives. So I made this a variable and now I'll keep going. Now I'll go to the seat cushion. So similarly, I'm going to uh, create a volume mesh in order to create random points. But on this occasion, I'm going to take this phase and I'm going to um, make a smaller, uh, I'm going to scale it down to a smaller uh, phase in order to create this extrusion. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to use this as a modifier of my, um, the spatial uh, distribution of the point count. So you see with the volume mesh, again, I created a point count of 3000 points, but I'm using this spatial weighting uh, optional uh, input now with a ramp function that through the seed modifier is varying the distribution of the random points. So inside and near the seed modifier, we have um, a much higher point density. And as we go farther away from it, we have a less dense point count. And we'll see later how this affects the, the lattice properties. So finally, we have the seat back. And similarly, we generate a mesh. But on this occasion, we're generating a surface mesh instead of a volume mesh. The reason for that being we can, we can have a different approach with the volume mesh approach. The random points are based on the point count. Whereas with the surface, we have a point spacing instead. So here we see uh, that this can be made a variable as well. I can call this uh, back point spacing and drag it at the top. And similarly, um, I could take uh, the, actually I forgot to do it, but for the seat cushion, 
I can also take those the, that point count and these variables make them also accessible for the design. So I can call this um, I wanted to make these two a variable. There we go. So I can call this um, minimum uh, spacing and this one maximum spacing, right? Uh, I'll specify that it's for the seat. There we go. And now we can put those at the top and that will allow me or anyone to easily play with the design without having to look for the parameters in blocks. All right, so we have pre-processed all those uh, points, right? We have created all these points, all these random points with having control over their spatial distribution. So that allows us now to obtain different lattices, as you can see. So these lattices are based on uh, those random points distributions. You see that they have a thickness property. So I can make that a variable and also put it at the top. So in this case, it would be the head uh, lattice thickness. I can put it at the top as well, right? I can do the same for the, the seat cushion. You see, I also have some lattice thickness here can put it at the top, call it uh, seat thickness, right? And of course I could do the same with the, the seat back, which we can see here. If I do a more detailed render, we can see perfectly the, the lattice. All right, so as I said, uh, now we can play with the design very easily. So if I put this in context with the seat frame, I think it looks great. Now we can change any of these parameters to play with our design. So I can, you know, I can, for example, here for the head point count, I can pull it down to 1500 instead of 2000. And the whole workflow updates. So this was the previous design and this is the new design, as you can see. I can even go down to 400 or something like that and see what that looks like. So extremely easy to, to explore design alternatives now. Now, let's say I want to change here for, for, the, for the seat, I want to change the minimum and maximum spacing, right? So I've made them variables and put them up here. So super easy to play with. So I'm going to put, to set the minimum spacing down to four millimeters and the max spacing to 10 millimeters. So now we wait for the new design to compute. And here it is. So you see, we pass from, from this design to this design, which I personally don't like that much. So I will keep it this way actually. And other things that we can do, uh, for example, let's say I want to uh, vary the thickness actually of, of the head cushion. So instead of a constant thickness, I can come down here and make this also a ramp function. And I'm going to vary the thickness around the middle for increased head comfort. So I'm going to uh, base it on a sphere. And that sphere, I'm going to center it at the centroid of, the, of that part, which is the head body, right? So I'm going to take the centroid of the, that, that part and that will be the centroid of the sphere. There we go. So now I'm going to make that uh, sphere bigger. Let me hide the head body here. So I'll make this sphere a bit bigger, let's say 25 millimeters. And now inside the sphere and around the sphere, I have a thickness of three millimeters and outside I'll have a thickness of 1.5 millimeters. You see, so now I have created this varying thickness property for the for the cushion. And again, if these uh, parameters are important to me, any of these parameters are important to me and I want to easily play with them. For example, if I want to change the, the 
influence zone of that uh, increased thickness, I can make this a variable, call it uh, influence radius for increased thickness. Put it here at the top next to the head point count. And then I can play easily with this. So I can put 40, for example, and we automatically update that uh, region. If I don't like the lattice density, hey, I actually would like to increase this again. Let's go back to 2000. You see, as you think about it, you see it on the screen immediately. So with NTOP, you don't need to be waiting for a long time to explore many different design alternatives. You can set up the workflow in such a manner that anyone can play with the design parameters that you consider relevant, and then you can easily visualize all those design alternatives immediately. Um, Lastly, I would like to show you uh, how we can, the, the workflows that we generate with NTOP are repeatable. And now I'm actually going to import a new part, this uh, head cushion here, all right? So I'm going to make this uh, a alternative head body two. So this is a passenger. Um, cut part and, and, and actually all I have to do now is to drag this in here, right? And this will be able to recalculate the same properties on this different part. Of course, I had this uh, surface lattice that I, will, I won't be needing anymore. So now, when I look at the head cushion, I have regenerated the same operation on this different geometry. So you've seen an example of how NTOP, once you have set up a, a workflow, you can reuse it over and over again on, on different parts. All right, so that's all I wanted to show you today. I hope uh, you enjoyed that. Please contact us if you'd like to have a demo uh, to get to know better what NTOP is capable of doing. Uh, if you're using NTOP and you have any questions about this type of applications, please send us an, an email at our uh, support email address. And um, I would like to thank you for, for joining today and have a nice day.